am almost 50. Getting back into the ga dating game, it sucks. I shouldn't have been in a relationship so close to ending my marriage. So it's more like a trauma bond. Yo, what is going on, guys? It is Taylor the Fiend. I hope you are all doing well. So on today's episode, we are going to be taking a look at a video from Insolent Audits titled 21 Minutes of Older Women Realizing That They Are Not Wanted Anymore and Crying on Social Media. So without further ado, let's just jump right in. Don't forget to leave your thoughts and your comments. So I'm way early for an appointment. I figured I'd make a TikTok that really nobody cares about, but it's more for me. So as someone who's been in a relationship for about the past 25 years, married for almost the past 24, and newly is separated or been separated for a year, uh, filed for divorce, and has been dating or dating a person for a decent amount of time. And then to have said person that seemed like a great guy that you really connected with, that like you just enjoyed each other's company and it was easy to kind of just out of nowhere, decide that he wanted to end it, that right now he didn't want a relationship. And he has some stuff going on personally that I get, he can't dedicate the time that he needs. And I was causing extra stress when I said I wouldn't, but it's like being in high school <laughs> and breaking up with that boyfriend that you really liked. Um. It's rough. And I've heard people say like the first breakup after like marriage is the hardest one or can be the hardest one. And maybe. So this woman left her marriage of a ridiculous amount of years to go out there and chase bad boys or chase another relationship because she thought it was the fun and right thing to do. And now she regrets it. So she's completely ditched her husband for another guy. And then the other guy doesn't even want to have a relationship with her. So now she's left out on the streets in the cold. Guys, I do not have any sympathy for women who decide to do this, okay? They decide to ruin their families. They decide to divorce their husbands and try and take him for a lot of money oftentimes as well. And then we're expected to feel sympathy because this woman is now not wanted by some other guy. Of course, you're not wanted by some other guy, okay? You're significantly older now. You've probably got a few kids or whatever. You've just gotten divorced, and now you're out there looking for another relationship. Like, no, absolutely not. Oh, poor you. Let me get this straight. You are all broken up because the boyfriend you had, which I will bet a dollar, she had this boyfriend lined up well before she put in for divorcing her husband of 24 years, i.e. he is just a friend. Yeah, right. Well, after she filed for divorce, the awesome boyfriend she had lined up as her middle-aged Prince Charming decided, nah, I'm good. I think I will call it quits now while I am ahead. And all of a sudden, the fairy tale ending she had planned using the ever important logic of her feels got smashed up on the rocky shores of reality. <laughs> Suck it up, buttercup. Your actions have consequences and the one everyone should be feeling anything for would be her ex-husband, who just got dragged into the theme park rides of family court, all because this gem of a decades plus post walk queen did the usual trope of thinking her personal feels were far more important than the needs of her family. Excuse me while I take a moment to reflect on how much her tears mean absolutely nothing compared to the legal hell she is putting her ex-husband through. It's more so because I shouldn't have been in a relationship so close to ending my marriage so it's more like a trauma bond and we were kind of codependent on each other but it doesn't make the pain feel any less it's still pretty fresh because it just happened on monday you gotta love how despite the ones that they're doing like this woman is screwing everything up herself okay completely ruining her husband's life ruining a marriage and yet she still paints it out as though she's the victim in the situation isn't that absolutely amazing how we can be completely wrong in this scenario completely regret things but absolutely take no accountability whatsoever and expect other people to feel sympathy for us like this woman brought up the word trauma in there 
Like, what on earth are you yapping about? And I wasn't expecting it. And I went from having someone I talk to most of the day, all day, if I'm not spending time with them for the last months, many months. And then before that, we were friends to no contact at all. And it's hard. And it makes me not ever want to date again, honestly. Because if I'm this heartbroken after one, I don't think I can handle another one. And everyone tells me that dating sucks, like in general, that there's a lot of weirdos that like people will tell you whatever. And it's hard to meet people now because nobody goes anywhere. Or if you do, like, how do you know you're not totally just meeting some weird person that is just telling you what you want to hear? I don't know. I guess it's time to just focus on myself for a little bit. Oh my God, bro. Oh, hell no, man. What the fuck, man? Have you guys noticed that some of my videos have gone missing over here on YouTube? That is because I am slowly moving them over to locals where I can actually host them without the risk of getting in trouble. If you are not aware, many creators are starting to move over to places like locals, rumble, etc. Because YouTube is not really a free speech platform. So if you are interested in supporting the channel and getting access to videos that are no longer available here, make sure that you come and join us over on Locals. The link will be in the video description down below. Supporters get access to their own exclusive videos that are no longer available to the public. So make sure you go to the link in the description and join us over there now. But anyway, guys, back to today's episode. What else can you do? You shouldn't have been in a relationship so close to your divorce. Damn, this queen dodges accountability better than Neil dodges bullets. She could just admit she planned this relationship as her exit strategy from her marriage. This is a very common tactic women use and equally common, it doesn't work out long term. That's exactly what she did. I completely agree with insulin audits, okay? A lot of these women, despite the fact that they paint themselves as the victim, have this relationship set up while they're in a previous one. Like, you'd be absolutely astounded, guys, at how many women only leave relationships when they have another one lined up. And then all of a sudden, when it doesn't work out, when the guy actually changes his mind and says, no, nah, I'm not really interested, then all of the tears come and all of the regret comes because they couldn't monkey... It's called monkey branching because they couldn't monkey branch to the next guy. Just say it, sister. Say, I was trying to exchange one relationship for another one and it didn't work out. That's it. And her saying she thinks she can't date anymore because she is heartbroken. Oh, someone please break out the violin as unbelievably her breaking up her marriage based on feeling somehow, some way, resulted in that she forgot to calculate the distinct possibility of having to go back into the dating market with a far lower SMV composed of a wall smashing and evidence she is the one who breaks up long-term commitments. Ladies, I do feel for women who are forced into the dating market at middle age for reasons beyond their control, but a classic case like this one is undoubtedly not pulling my heartstrings in the least for her. I may be wrong, but somehow I would not be surprised if she has tried running back to her ex-husband just to get rejected as uh, harsh as a uh, teenage kid trying to uh, buy a six pack of beer without a legal ID. But wait, there's more. So I know I look like a little bit crazy. Uh, I, I only got three and a half hours of sleep because I have insomnia even after I took melatonin. <laughs> um, and, but it's just crazy how like you can be sitting and you can be fine. And then like all of a sudden out of nowhere, <laughs> like you remember again that you can't reach out to that person or like in it. And it hurts because you're worried about them. And I know that he doesn't deserve me to f like feel the way I do, but- Oh, please. You don't care about the dude at all. This is absolute nonsense. Okay, guys, I've said this many times over, but this woman is, has deliberately decided to sit down with a camera and record herself crying and saying how she's only got three and a half hours sleep and all of this nonsense, right? She's deliberately done this to try and get sympathy from other people. It's not actually genuine. 
Okay, this is just, it's manipulation. This video, I don't have any other way to actually word it, guys. It's just straight up, she's trying to manipulate the audience into taking her side. And like, she's just trying to paint herself as the victim. These people, I've always called them professional victims, right? Because they don't have any actual talents. They don't have any actual reason for people to be around them. So what they have to do is they have to manipulate other people into liking them and siding with them. It's really sad and really desperate to watch. That's the type of person that I am, that I just see the best in people. <laughs> and I, people that I care about, I never want anything bad to happen to them. And maybe I'll move past that and I'll be angry. But for right now, it's just really hard to not reach out or, um, like, I don't even know what I'm trying to say. It's just hard. And, like, I know it's going to get better, but I'm still struggling. She feels bad because she reached out to that person, being the ex-boyfriend, and she is worried about him. Translation from Womanese. She feels lonely because of the boo she picked to replace her ex-husband of 24 years dropped the uh, deuces on her and decided he didn't want to uh, handle all her baggage. And the part where she said she knows he doesn't deserve it. Are you sure about that? Really? He doesn't deserve a woman who put in for a divorce of her last marriage to worry about him. Trust me, sister. I don't think he is extremely broken up at this point. Some may even argue the guy dodged a bullet. And if she actually were the type of person who sees the best in people, I would argue she should have applied that with her marriage. Not once did she say her ex-husband abused her. That makes it clear he was not a bad guy in the least. And he stayed with this uh, total catch for 24 years. Oh, boo-hoo. It's so hard to reach out. Again, another translation from one. Womanese. I am so sad both my ex-husband and ex-boyfriend don't want anything to do with me, so I am making this video and posted it on the internet in hopes it will get sympathy from online strangers to help me justify my bad choices. Tell me in the comments if you think my translation was off or I missed something. Look at the bright side, queen. You are strong, independent, and living the dream now. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Hey, y'all. Uh, so... I'm gonna get a little personal here. I am almost 50 and um, getting back into the dating game and um, it sucks, like. Let me just stop you right there, okay? Women who are going into their 50s or even in their 50s should not be in the dating game in the first place. Hell, the dating game is a ridiculous term to begin with in the first place, but you should not be dating when you're 50. If you wanted to have a long term, just call it hooking up, just call it something else. Getting with random dudes, call it that, okay? Because when you're 50, you should have had, hell, you should be on the way if not having grandchildren by now, okay? Like your family should be long since sorted, your kids should be quite grown up by this point. Okay, but we're still out here dating when we're 50 years of age, looking for some guy to take us seriously and to solve our life problems. Whenever I hear these women and they're like, yeah, I'm out there in the dating market when I'm 50, I just think to myself that something is seriously wrong because these women could have had their Prince Charming when they were 21 years of age. They could be married well and truly by the time they're 25 if they wanted to. They could knock all of this stuff out, but instead they decide to screw around for literally decades and then look for a good man. I mean, I've been single for like uh, 13 years, but i um, just busy with myself, my, my son, now grown. But anyways, we're not going to talk about all that. Right. So she's a single mother who is returning to the dating market. So what did we, did we divorce the, I'll have sympathy for her if she's a widow, but if she's not a widow, I don't want to hear it. Like save this, save the excuses. Okay. But the thing now is like dating sites and I do not like dating sites, but I work so much. Like I can't, like, I don't ever have the opportunity to meet anyone. And, um, so here's the thing with these dating sites, like you have all these people messaging you and then they want to like message you all day long and t I mean, talking about nothing. And, um... I just want to make this clear, okay? Every time you hear a woman say that she doesn't have enough time, if the dude's attractive enough, she'll make time. 
I'm so sick of hearing people, what this really means, okay, when somebody says they don't have time for something, is it just means that that person or that thing is not high enough priority for them against their other priorities. You see what I'm saying? But if the guy was attractive enough, it wouldn't matter. That's what I'm trying to say here, okay? Every time you hear these women say, oh, I'm just so busy. Guys, if you're a man who's out there dating, you're choosing to go out there and put yourself through the hell that is dating. If you're a guy who's out there dating and women tell you that they're busy, just, compl just move on and completely ignore them. Like that is done and dusted, okay? Absolutely done and dusted. Because these women, when they say they're busy, what it really means is uh, the, the guy's not really what I want. That's what it means. Um, like, I don't have time to sit there and message all day long, you know? And not just that, I don't want to put that much time into somebody before I go on a date. Um, because that, that first date, like, me, I have to feel something for someone. Like, there's got to be spark, chemistry, good conversation, something. The man has to be quite physically attractive, is what she's trying to say here. Um, and I'm bad. Like, I mean, like, if I don't feel it... I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to continue. She doesn't want to be texting all day. Fair enough. Busy people don't have time for games, but let's be honest. Women don't initiate dating conversations in person or in text. That's almost always the guy because all women, regardless of age, like to be pursued. Sure, you can buy into the uh, Bumble app strategy of women initiating the conversation. That's working out awesome for the shareholders. I was way off. And her story of getting back into the uh, dating game after being single for 13 years sure let me remind my viewers that a woman's definition of being single is very different from a man's definition i mean what it compasses a woman being single let's see one night stands still single hitting up the old uh, bed buddies for a roll in the sheets a few times still single making out with a guy after a uh, chat over a coffee still single going on a cruise and uh, having a hot girl minute with some hot stranger after getting tipsy Still single. Am I saying this queen did those things? No. I am saying women believe the word single has got tons of flexibility. It's got electrolytes. Um, which, you know, isn't necessarily always a good thing because, you know, people are usually nervous on first dates. They can't be themselves or they're not themselves or whatever. And, um, but, um, this, this, um, oh, and, and, uh, this, talk like okay why do we have to talk about why, why must you bring up sex or um talk or i'm horny what are you doing this morning i'm horny I, I i i don't know you like that yet i'm not a prude definitely not a prude but um like i told this one i'm like i'm a lady and i expect to be treated like a lady and um you know, they don't like that. I don't want no D pics. Um, I, I, I I find it funny when you have women who hit this age and they're looking for serious long term commitment from men, and then they're surprised when men are not interested in serious long term commitment from them. Right? It's like the thing is, men and women value different things in each other. And let me tell you right now, men do not value 50-something-year-old single mothers as much as a 24-year-old non-single mother. You are going to get replaced so damn easily. Like, the thing is, guys are not out here. Their, their dream woman is not in their 50s with a kid. She's not 13 years single, okay? She, not looking for a woman who's 13 years single because like Insulin Audit says, we know that you're not exactly celibate and reading the Bible for those 13 years. Okay, so what guy wants to go out here, date a 50-something-year-old woman who is divorced with a kid, probably divorced with a kid, and who has a body count of Lord knows what number, and I hate to use the word body count, but Lord knows what number, and we're expected to commit to you. This is why dudes send you these DMs, because they're not looking for something long-term with you. That's why. It's just crazy. I hate that this is how um, this is how how things are now. Dating apps and texting and um, all of that. I've always been one like I want to meet someone um, just on a whim and be like, oh hey, <laughs> you know, and go from there.
Don't work that way, though. So, uh, dating after 40? Mm. So, <laughs> y'all, I know somebody's watching this that is is in the dating game out there over 40. <laughs> Tell me your thoughts. I want to know. I'm not a prude. Definitely not a prude. Yeah, that brings a lot more sus to the 13-year uh, single claim. Now, doesn't it? Now, I will say sending d pics really doesn't work out well. Although I have heard the claim from some guys that it does work well if you are well endowed. And she is DTF. Hey, who am I to criticize a tactic that works, right? Back to this queen. If she is shocked and shaken by how the dating game is in the West, well, it's not how it was when she was in her 20s. Sorry, Colleen. With wall smashing and a lower SMB, it's just not going to be a walk in the park. And if we throw on top of that her unrealistic expectations, well, that's just a recipe for a total letdown. Welcome to dating on a harder setting, i.e. what the average Joe has been uh, dealing with since day one of dating. Oh, don't worry. It's only going to get tougher uh, the higher she sets her uh, standards. Okay, let me put it a different way for uh, my female viewers. Have you ever visited a place in your youth that made a real impression on you, like maybe an old neighborhood or some favorite past vacation spot? Then you return about 15 years later and are shocked by either the drastic changes or the disarray you witness on your return. Then you realize the only one expecting nothing to change about it was you. Yeah, well that's the uh, decades post wall you and the modern dating reality. Same difference. Same, same, but different. But still the same. Moving on. Here's what you need to know about dating in your 40s. Oh man, not another dating coach. It is astounding to me how many dating coaches there are that are like divorced 40 year old women. Nobody should be taking your dating advice in the first place. Hell, you shouldn't be dating at all. You're in your 40s and you're probably divorced, probably have a kid, something like this. It's absolutely insane to me how many of these accounts there actually are of women who go out there, make terrible dating decisions, and then try and convince other women to make the same terrible decisions that they did. I should preface this by saying I am single. I'm not going to share what has worked for me because obviously I'm still single. However, I feel like I've finally reached a place where I'm actually enjoying the dating process. And I feel like that is an achievement in itself. So let me share my approach to dating with you. Firstly, I have been that girl that's found dating to be anxiety inducing, stressful, upsetting. I've had to really do some work on myself, my self-worth and some of my insecurities to be able to reach this point. Translation, we've been with a whole bunch of guys. Translation is we went with a whole bunch of guys. It was really painful because they didn't want to commit to me. Uh, I was insecure because they would always be seeing other girls at the same time as me. But don't worry, now I'm happy, right? It's basically like this break point where women realize, you know, they, they start to get really frustrated at the men. And they're like, damn, you know, this dating stuff is really hard. I've got to do some self-worth, self work now after they've been with like a whole bunch of different men. That's the translation there, guys. I kid you not, is literally she's been with a whole bunch of situationships. That's all that that means. If you're not quite there yet, that's okay, but you will get there. So the first thing that I do is I let the men do all the work. <laughs> that's gonna be so controversial. <laughs> but I'm saying it anyway, let them do the work. And by that, I mean, I sit back and I allow them the space to come to me. I know it can be hard to sit back and let somebody take the lead sometimes, especially as either single moms or I'm a business owner. I'm, you know, very much used to stepping in and, and getting things organized and getting things moving. However, I found that in my dating life, I really do prefer to sit in a more feminine role. Right. So we are a single mother. This is exactly the nonsense I'm talking about, guys. Single mother in her 40s giving dating advice, and the dating advice is let men do everything. Wow, I wonder why she's single. I wonder why this woman has struggled to get a man to stick around with her. I have absolutely no idea why that might be the case. And the kind of man that I want to date is that traditionally masculine man. I love how we all want a traditionally masculine man. We want a provider. We want a guy who's going to protect us and take care of us. But you are not traditional at all. I'm sorry, but that guy who's traditional and that guy who's traditionally masculine, he doesn't want to date 40-year-old single mothers. It's not on the agenda. Now, you can sit there and you can try and shame men all day and say how they need to step up. But this is something that men are typically 
not interested in doing if they have any level of self-respect in the first place. So by sitting back and allowing him to initiate the contact, by allowing him to plan the dates and get in contact with me. She kind of set this entire thing up perfectly by saying she is giving dating advice while she is single. That's like taking uh, financial management advice from a compulsive spender. But either way, let's uh, break down her dating advice and see where exactly her flow of knowledge of the uh, carousel will lead to. She's enjoying the dating process. Hmm. Him, 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 her, him, him, bodies, 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 bodies. I mean, let's be honest. Even for the uh, best player, to say the dating process is enjoyable is a stretch. And as for a woman, they want one man to settle down with. To say she enjoys the process of dating is akin to saying uh, in job hunting, uh, they are enjoying the interview process. Somehow that's either cope or code for having fun racking up the mileage meter. Her stance on letting the uh, man do all the work. Let me tell you ladies why this strategy works in the short term and falls apart in the long term for boss babes. It's because this is how boss babes fake being submissive to attract a traditional masculine man, but soon enough, her masculine demeanor comes out and the man she's attracted to drops the deuces and hits the road. Allows me to assess what kind of man he really is. What I have found through doing this is that the men who are not particularly masculine, they can get a little bit frustrated and see themselves out. <laughs> the ones that are the kind of men that I want to date, they really enjoy it. The second thing I'd say that is really important is to just have a full and busy life of your own. I love how this definition, this woman's definition, excuse me, of masculinity is whatever serves her best. I love how every time we judge what a man is worth and how masculine he is, it's always predicated on how much the man does for the woman. I keep myself so busy with my friends, with my businesses, with my girls, with all the other things that I'm doing in my life. If a man is not calling and planning dates with me, I don't really even think about it because I'm so busy doing other things. The two men that I went on dates with recently, they have both tried to book me in for another date, but I've just been so incredibly busy and it's not a game that I'm playing, it's actual fact. I am just that busy and what it has shown them is they need to be proactive Active, they need to plan this in advance if they want to see me. The third thing is I'm not really interested in going on coffee or walks or uh, just a drink dates. I only accept dinner dates. And I realized that there are people who prefer to just have a quick drink, just to check if there is a vibe there before proceeding forward. However, I prefer to talk to somebody for a little bit longer before I actually meet them. Have a few phone calls, definitely lots of texting, maybe a FaceTime to see if there is a spark in chemistry there and an interest. And if at that point they are not asking to take me out to dinner, that's not the man for me. So we have here a 40 plus year old single mother who only accepts dinner dates and requires men to chase her endlessly and to text her and to call her and to FaceTime her because she's so incredibly busy. What an incredibly entitled individual. Okay, and there is absolutely no reason for a man to date a woman like this. I guarantee you, by the way, guys, so this same woman, I want this to really sink in, okay? This woman who's sitting here right now saying that she only accepts dinner dates, she accepts everything from the man who is attractive. She will go on walks, she will go on coffee dates. If there is a man that she really wants, she does not require a dinner date. Guys, please, if you're a man who is out there dating, you're choosing to brave the dating market as it were, if a woman requires you to take her out on a dinner date, what she's essentially saying is, I'm, I'm after your resources. I want your investment. I, I'm not going to give you any sort of intimacy because I don't find you attractive. So what I'm doing is I'm going to just try and get what I can out of you because I don't find you attractive. The attractive men, they go into a separate category where they can be taken out. You know, they can go on coffee dates or walks or whatever, and then they just go back to his house afterwards or the next time that they hang out, right? You, you see what I'm saying here? It's a very different standard for men that we're attracted to versus men that we're not. If you as a man get this requirement that you have to take a, you have to take a woman out on a date, just drop her immediately because typically that same woman, th guys, this would be totally fine. I want to make this clear, okay? If this same woman, her entire life, and sh she was 20, she had no kid, and she only accepted dinner dates and that's all she'd ever accepted and she's only been out with like one guy and that guy was you, 
that's totally fine. But don't expect princess treatment when you're not actually a princess. Okay, I'm not against, guys, I'm not against dinner dates, but the problem is that's a traditional thing. And this woman is not traditional. A lot of these women are not traditional, but they are tra demanding traditional behavior from men. Hell no. Guys, we are going to be leaving today's episode there. As always, remember to leave your thoughts and your comments. Make sure you take care of yourselves, and I'll be seeing you all in the next one. Peace. Mm -hmm.